What's happening at Disneyland? Well, Tiana's is changing quickly before our eyes. They're driving bulldozers on the Haunted Mansion lawn, and my spidey senses are tingling just a bit at Redwood Creek. But first, let's get our first look at the new turnstiles coming to the main entrance at the Disneyland Resort. You'll recall a while back we reported that there was a permit filed that suggested they were going to replace all the turnstiles at the main entrance to the Disneyland Resort, both DCA and Disneyland. And today, here they are. These are actually our, the two of them anyway. Our first look at the new turnstiles, not exactly the turnstiles they have at Walt Disney World, where there's, it's just the scanner and then nothing else. These are still turnstile-ish. There's your scanner for your magic band or your barcode in the app. That's a monitor with a Windows operating system on screen there. And guess what? Flash their barcode or their magic band, and then are these clear plastic doors would open up for you. So guess we'll still have to pass through a turnstile-like system. And there will likely still be cast members there standing by to assist guests who are having trouble. So while it's not the Walt Disney World system, which everybody seems to love, it is still an upgrade, an improvement on the existing very old school, very analog method of scanning guests into the park. Principally, it removes the need for a cast member to hold their mobile device and to scan your ticket or your magic band or your barcode. Now we do it. The guest is responsible for scanning the barcode. Take a look at it from the exit angle. So while they look pretty modern, and again, a, a, an improvement over what has existed in the past, it's still closer to our current system than it is to the Walt Disney World system. And I'm curious why they opted to do this multi-million dollar project instead of doing the Walt Disney World system. And I'm not asking because I, I'm questioning Disney's decision, whether it be right or wrong, but I'm just curious what the, what the factor was. Why is the Disneyland Resort not eligible for the same system they have at Magic Kingdom or at Walt Disney World? And I will add also that we are still a ways off from this going live. They've installed these two at the far end of the DCA entrance, most likely to, for them to do testing. And it'll take a little while for them to finish that and then to install all the new turnstiles. So it could be a little bit before we see this live in the parks. While we're here, let's just pop into DCA real quick. Say hi to Mickey and Goofy and then head over to the Hyperion Theater. You guys know I'm always on the lookout for signs, both literal and suggestive. Last time we checked in on the Hyperion Theater, I had observed that while they had cleared everything out in the rear part of that staging area for the Hyperion, they hadn't put any new tables in. There was just these tables out here in front, and it was wide open back here. And I had questioned, why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they put seating back here? And then today I saw these chains up, and I said, man, that's a sign. If you're looking for signs, chains up at the Hyperion Theater is a sign. <laughs> They've got plans. There's something happening because these weren't here before. And they're set up just as if they would be a queue. And they go all the way to the rear, across the back, and then along the side of the building. And I thought maybe this is for something that they're doing for Pixar Fest. Because there will be, it's more than just a parade. There's going to be food and other things going on here. Is this for Pixar Fest? What's happening? Turns out nothing. Turns out they're doing an award ceremony at the Hyperion Theater and they were setting up a, you know, a pen here for those guests, a queue system for those guests. This is not permanent and it's not indicative of anything happening at the Hyperion Theater or even for Pixar Fest. Damn it! We're so close! I'm sorry, I got excited for a second. I wanted to report that, but the, it's too bad. Let's go on the Mark Twain and check in on what's happening at the Haunted Mansion, my new favorite pastime. And that pile of dirt back there in the where the fountain was is just growing. I don't know where that dirt used to be because I feel like the, it, it wasn't that big before, so they've dug more. I'm guessing this is for that, you know, the, the main queue area where they're working. They've displaced all that dirt over there, but that is just an impressive 
an impressive dirt mound. It's not quite Mount Spielberg levels, but it's impressive considering the workspace that it's in. Searching for any signs, but the, the equipment and the dirt are obstructing all of our possible views of anything going on there. And there's an excavator on the forward part of the property of the queue, not in the rear part of the queue. And that looks like a backhoe literally where the front lawn of the haunted mansion should be they're driving <laughs> they're driving a backhoe on the front lawn of the haunted mansion and that triggers me just a little bit we'll we'll pan to the left to see if we can find anything oh now we're back we don't get long to check this out but there's that backhoe again he's moving dirt adding to the pile what are they doing at the haunted mansion queue Oh my gosh. Okay, there's that excavator again. Another, like, I think that's a mini excavator. Just walls or dirt and... Okay, so what is that thing? Right there. What is that, you guys? I asked social and got a few interesting possibilities. Could be something what we've seen before, like with wooden forms. You know, you put the forms in the ground, fill them with concrete, let it set. Then take the wooden forms out and you've got a concrete wall. In this case, it's for a concrete post or a pillar, which would make these something like uh, sono tubes. These, though, are a lot bigger and maybe not the right material. They look more like plastic. Could be drain pipes, though, again, they're kind of huge <laughs> and not sure if something like that of that scale would be necessary for something like the mansion. But then again, maybe this isn't specifically for the mansion, but part of a larger system. Or it could be for other kinds of services that they need to send under the train tracks, which is sensible. But again, those are, those are pretty sizable. And I've seen a lot of construction sites over the years, and I don't think I've ever seen any kind of conduit or drain pipe or pillars like that, at least not relative to the size of the mansion that we're seeing here. So it seems kind of out of place. That's why I'm noticing it. We'll probably never know. Because next week, all of that will be underground and covered in dirt. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> that's all we could see on this trip. I tried to go back, but I didn't have time on that day. Stay tuned for more from Fresh Baked. While I was shooting Tiana's, I also turned the camera to the left to look at the Haunted Mansion. And it, there was something about this view that I missed last time, and that I, but I finally realized what it was, why it looked different. And it's because those trees are gone. The spruce trees that ran along the side of the mansion that separated the mansion from that little outdoor vending, you know, merchandise cart next to the attraction exit. Probably not a permanent situation. They will probably replace those. It's not difficult to replace spruce trees, I would imagine. We'll take a closer look and you can see there's the, the mausoleum, the exit to Haunted Mansion. Guests come out of that building right there and then right next to that, they've taken all the trees and vegetation growing in that area, getting ready to install the new gift shop that's coming right there at that exit. I think that they will replace those trees. I'm not gonna panic. You know, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to keep doing these construction updates from this spot right here on the path in front of Splash Mountain, Tiana's Bio Adventure, and doing these updates because every time I do, I have to pass in front of Harbor Galley here right behind me. And now they're making cookies. <laughs> I just got a whip. The smell of those cookies is just too much to bear. I can't take it. Speaking of what's that, what's that? I saw something like this when they were updating things for Fantasmic years ago, when Fantasmic came back post-COVID. And it was a coffer dam. But this looks a little different than what I saw then. And I'm curious if that's still what this is, coffer dam being something they set up so they can drain water and work in an area while retaining water on the other side of it. I haven't seen them drain this water yet, so I don't know yet if that's what it is. But it's curious. I'll, I'm standing by for observations or education on what that could be. We'll finish our trip on the Mark Twain to check in on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And there's a lot, a lot to take in in this image. Just Notice a few things. We're going to get to that here in a little bit. 
Something's happening to the mountain. Something's happening to the Lift Hill barn. All very, very interesting, <laughs> you guys. Things are happening quickly here. We're going to get to that in a minute. But let's take a look at what's going on along the ground where they are definitely making, getting ready to turn things into a swamp. And look, there's a meeting of Imagineers and construction workers in that space. They're getting ready to turn that area into a swamp. Very close to that happening. But first, the top of the mountain. This is from the Adventureland Treehouse. Last week, we saw that the mountain was turning green. They were making the, the mountain a hill. This week, it's... They're already, they're already into the flower stage. They are now adding all the little flowers. I guess what you, I don't know what flowers these are. I have to look that up and maybe somebody can tell me what kind of flowers those are that they're adding. But soon all that greenery that you see on the mountain, all that green color will be covered in those flowers. Well, nearly all of it anyway. That's the new mountain that we're getting, the new hill. It's even extending along to the back of the mountain, back here as well. We got three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys working on that site right now. Very, very exciting. This thing is changing before our eyes. I really hope people give it a chance. Back on the ground by the Harbor Galley, and there's that meeting that I was talking about. All hats represented. We've got white hats, brown hats, and even a blue hat. The brown hats are typically Imagineers. And the white hats are typically construction crew. So Imagineers and construction workers getting together to work things out just over the part where it's going to be. This is one of the key changes to this site is that swampy area out in front, you know, where the boats turn around. Meanwhile, they have stripped or stripping the barn. I thought they had were going to pressure wash this and leave it as it is, but they, have, they are stripping it. They're even, as you can see, there's a guy down there. Whacking away concrete off the side of that, or dirt, rock, uh, not concrete, rock, off the side of that barn. And the guy in the, in the bottom, I heard the sounds of cutting, and I thought it might be that guy. But no, he's working on something else entirely. The guy right there in the center of the frame was cutting away rock on that barn, and then they're going to just take it all away. What are they doing here? Isn't that interesting? So they're going to put a new roof on that, on that structure and change that way it looks around it as well. They're just clawing at that thing. They're ripping it apart. <laughs> That's wild. I'm sorry, guys. The Briar Patch sign is gone. The last sign of what Splash Mountain used to be it is no longer the Briar Patch. We don't know what this space is called now. It's just a log cabin with merch in it and a grass roof. Nothing new to report at the front or entrance of the attraction. We saw some guys working up on this area last week, but I'm unable to determine what it is that they did. I don't see any effect or result other than the fact that I think that board is still there. That wood plank is still there. There's some crew at the top of the mountain. So let's go take a look at Slippin' Falls, which I don't know what to call this anymore. Oh, it's Tiana's Tunnel. Is that what we're calling it? That's not Tiana's Tunnel. As updated last week, it has been enclosed. I saw crew working in here a couple days ago. And you can kind of see the. If you look through there, you can see where they cut the, the opposite side of the mountain. You can still see that part of the mountain is still there. So it's probably going to stay as it was. The mountain will remain. By the way, there's your roof for that new t tunnel. Somebody's jacket. But yeah, there's the mountain. You can see the mountain through. Right? There's the holes that we've been watching them cut out of there. Oh, oh, there's a guy. One more look. Got a little closer. So whatever it is that they're doing, it's only going to be on the, on the right side as the guests are going down that, that path to the guest's right, I would guess. Is whatever it is they're doing, it'll only be that on the left will look probably like it always did. Mountain. That's my guess. 
Looks like they're also doing some work on the roof of that entrance building there. They've stripped away the the what was it was shingles. I thought I thought they were replacing those wood shingles before, but now they're gone completely. And now you can see what looks like insulation. So I'm going to be curious to see what they're doing to that building as well. Now we mentioned this before. We saw that they had ripped off the roof from the barn out front. Let's get another look at that. It's just not what I was expecting. Are they get <laughs> I thought that they had already pressure washed this thing. And maybe they did, but why would you do that before stripping it? I don't know. But this is a really interesting development. And it does go towards, by the way, as we look at the exterior of that barn where they're going to be replacing the facade, it does go towards how extensive this update is. What are those things? Those four little knobs? I think it's four, maybe three knobs that they've... Those weren't there before, if I recall. <laughs> I'm just curious. Okay, now let's get a really good close-up look at those flowers. Pink and white and green. I don't know if I can. those can be identified. I'm sure we'll get some comments. What, uh, what, do you, what, what do you call somebody who knows flowers? Botanist? I was hoping maybe we could see something happening inside the tunnel as well. I thought I saw something, but it just turned out to be that guy's legs. But that does mean that they're working on this part of the attraction. They're getting ready, perhaps, to install Mama Odie's bottles, her magic potion bottles at the drop, at the top of the drop. Guys, that's happening. They're doing it. Now, forgive me, but I'd like to take a quick break from this construction update to let you guys know about Getaway Today. You may already know that they are our preferred vacation planner, travel agent uh, for our fans who are looking to book a trip to Disneyland or Walt Disney World or more. Universal Studios Hollywood, Universal Orlando, SeaWorld, Legoland, you name it. And I'd like to think that we know them very well. We've met many of them personally, and we know how kind they are and how really tremendously good they are at their jobs. And that's why I'm confident in referring our fans to Getaway because I know I am confident that you will be treated just as well as we have. If you're planning a trip to a Disney park or Universal or anything else of that nature, if you're planning a trip soon, use the link in our description so that they know that we sent you and so that we know that you were sent to them through one of our YouTube videos. And in so doing, you can be confident that you're going to be getting some of the best possible service from people who know everything there is to know about planning a trip to the Disney parks. Thank you for that. Let's get back to the show. We'll change gears and head out to Town Square and City Hall. The recent wins forced Disney to take down the scrim, which is great. So we get to see a little bit of what they've been up to, which is quite a bit. They're still working on, you know, basically it's, they're making it pretty. They're, it's new paint, uh, the new faux brick facades. There's, there's a guy painting right there. They repainted the Disneyland City Hall, that blue sign. More paint on the trim in that area. You can see that they have replaced all those veneers, the, the, the brick veneers to the exteriors. Just making it shine like they did for the Mark Twain. I really appreciate this. This is something that Disney does not get enough credit for. We take it for granted that everything is just going to look good all the time. Go to any other theme park and you will see facades that don't look as pristine and new as Disneyland facades always do. Same for the Main Street Fire Department. Now, I thought I had heard somebody mention, or people have talked about, the bell at the top of the fire department. This is not something that I, that I noticed or observed closely in the past. Is that new? Is that a new bell? By the way, I should mention also that the scrim and scaffold are down out front at the lost and found in the restrooms and the lockers. It does look like they cleaned up they didn't replace the, the roofs, but they very likely a pressure wash happened out here. And these exteriors are now looking very, very new, very clean, and very fresh. Astro Orbiter. I mean, that looks done to me. That looks pretty complete. I don't see much room for <laughs> adding any more pieces. I was here a few days ago and caught this view 
from the omnibus. I don't know if it's, we can't really see much here either, but that's pretty much what's left, I think, is just installing the ride vehicles at this point. But all the little satellites appear to be in place and the paint is done. They even took down the scrim and, uh, around the, that outer satellite. Looks good, even though it's the wrong theme, in my opinion. We'll get on the monorail and head to downtown Disney where things are actually speeding up here as well. We've got trees planted in the back here where the uh, trash compactor is going to go. Concrete has been put in. They're, it's, it's developing. This space is developing in a way that I was not expecting. And there you go. You've got, they're building a wall. The, the exterior walls are now going up around Parkside Market. You can see the, the concrete has been put down. You can see definition for how the, the interior of the building is going to be set up. You can see specific rooms, areas, spaces, curved areas. Definition. <laughs> That's pretty neat. There will come a time when people are going to get to walk in that space and get something tasty to eat or drink. Not too far from now. Now here's something that's done. They finished the concrete work out at the entrance from the downtown Disney parking lot. Just this little sliver of scrim is up. We'll take a look there in a second, but this is all new concrete here. The, the, the old downtown Disney sign is still there. I'm still maintaining that they, you know, they're going to take that thing out and just replace it whole and put the new sign in the same spot like a Lego piece. They'll just pop, pop that out of there and put in the new one. But there's this one little slice. Din Tai Fung. Briskly moving along. That is an enormous restaurant, you guys. <laughs> that is a giant building that they are constructing here for dumplings. Giant House of Dumplings is coming soon to downtown Disney. That's all new right there. Those yellow sort of curved pieces. Saw them also on the side of the building. Now, last week I mentioned we were looking at this side and I said, hey, look, you could see the rebar poking out over the wall. And I said that we're very close to getting, you know, that means they're going vertical. And sure enough, as, as we mentioned, we have walls up where that rebar was. There's still more to go. You can still see the rebar coming out of those cinder blocks, but the wall's going up. Wonderground Gallery has closed for a minute. They're doing a refurb inside. We don't know how extensive it is, but it's going to be a minute before we see Wonderground Gallery again. Speaking of which, let's talk about what other construction projects are going on around the resort. We talked about Astro Orbiter. That's going to reopen on March 22nd. Redwood Creek, we still don't have a date yet. That's closed for now and indefinitely. We're going to talk about that again in a minute. The Columbia is closed now and will reopen on March 30th. The Matterhorn will be closing on April 15th for 11 days. Matterhorn closes on April 15th and reopens on April 26th. The Disney Gallery, great moments with Mr. Lincoln and the and the gift shop next door they'll be closing on april 16th and that is indefinite we don't yet have a date the calendar doesn't go far enough into the future to see my guess is they're taking down the disney 100th display in you know the, the lincoln ante room and then the incredible coaster will be closing on april 8th and that'll be down for 11 days also reopening on april 19th we'll finish up our work at downtown disney Here's something interesting. Centrico is getting themed elements installed. That means they're pretty close, right? They've added the little grassy touches to the top of the roof line there and those bamboo-like or straw-like hanging lanterns, I'm assuming. You can actually see those in the concept art. <laughs> it's funny what you notice in the concept art after they start building it. I wouldn't have paid attention to this, but that art is coming to life. There's the grassy things and... You can see actually up top at Paseo, you're getting those same straw-like lanterns or lamps, I should say. Well, look at that. They, I, there's, 
the Paseo sign. I never noticed that in the concept art either. They're, they the Paseo is a sign there. And there's going to be an assign over here as well. And it looks like the dining section is going all the way out to that edge. And there, well, look at that. <laughs> we fought, we got it. The, the Paseo sign is installed. We now have definition. It is no longer the building formerly known as Catal. It is now Paseo. That's great. Now we talked a bit about the closure for Redwood Creek, and I mentioned that my spidey senses are tingling a little bit. There's, a, there's no date yet, which means it's going to be an extended closure. At least, what, 90 days? Or no, 45 days. The calendar goes 45 days out. That's pretty long for Redwood Creek. I made a point of mentioning last week, I don't think it's related to Avatar. But I heard a rumor, I don't remember where, that said it was going to reopen in June. That's a long time. What could they be doing for three months? I don't, again, I don't think it's construction, but it's also not nothing. Because what they're doing needs to be obscured. It gets in the way of show. Here's the thing. I don't believe that they would refurb Redwood Creek if they had plans to do something else with it, if they do have plans that are Avatar related. It's too soon to turn it into Avatar, but if they have decided to turn it into Avatar, which again, I feel like is the most logical thing, they wouldn't be putting money into it to, to update Redwood Creek. They would just, same for the same reasons why they haven't done anything to Tomorrowland or the backlot, the Hollywood backlot. So they want things to be obscured back here for some reason, and it's gonna take a while for them to do it, a few months, Land surveying, perhaps. I don't know how long that takes. But the way things are aligning right now with this project, the news coming out, you know, with Bob Iger talking about Avatar again, new leadership in Imagineering, leadership that included the guy who was part of the team that built Pandora at Animal Kingdom in the first place. I don't know. My... As I mentioned in the intro, my spidey senses are tingling. I'm going to keep a close eye on Redwood Creek and listen for news on that situation. For now, while we're here, we can talk about Grizzly Peak. No, nothing to update you on with regard to the DVC area that they're creating here. They don't look near complete. There's still dirt. Needs concrete here. Looks like there's still a ways to go on that. Just like there's still a ways to go at the Blue Sky Cellar, which I don't know if they're going to keep that name or not, but that's this is going to be a DVC lounge also. Walls are still up in Toontown. We're back in Disneyland. Walls are still up in Toontown for uh, Donald's Pond, but we got this from the street team. Testing. This was happening on Saturday. This is through the wall or over the wall. I'm not sure. So we know it works. We know it's back there and it's working. The question is, is it draining? I don't know. Because I feel like that was the issue is that they couldn't get the water to drain correctly. Which is a common situation. That's the reason why we had an, a problem with the fountain at the Toontown entrance and they had to replace the grass with the brick. Similar scenario. So maybe they have finally worked that out and they can, if they're, if they're at the testing phase, we could be at the walls down phase soon. On the way out, we stopped by the Fantasyland Theater to find construction walls up. Not for a new show, though, unfortunately. They're getting ready for Pixar Fest that begins on April 26th. They'll be using the theater for the Pixar Pals Playtime Party. And one thing that I immediately noticed, apart from the very sparse-looking theming, this does not look particularly awesome, I must say. But they've removed all the ground-level seats to make way for that dance floor play area, or they're going to at least. We'll be covering this event in full, and I'll be curious to see if the, the final result is as Spartan as it looks in this concept art, because it doesn't look like a lot. And is that kid dabbing? With that, we'll head to Walt Disney World and Epcot to get on the monorail to check out what's happening at Commuter Corps Plaza. This footage, thanks again to Adventureland underscore dad. Things are just about as we left them. I'm actually not seeing a lot of visible changes. You know, they're still working on the facade to those structures. 
the buildings around the commuter court plaza. Looks like they're still trying to put concrete down there and finish all the planters, etc. But otherwise, things look to be about as we found them last week. Except for this side. This side is <laughs> gro growing rapidly. It's the one thing that has my attention the most, although I don't expect anything to be show-related doing here, but uh, that's fascinating. Polynesian, the DVC tower at the Polynesian. The facade there is slowly coming along. We're starting to see a little bit of definition happening there besides the concrete structure itself. I hope people like this. They have, Disney's been leaning into that DVC thing. I hope it works out. We'll end at the Magic Kingdom. And those are, I don't know if those are, there's water in the, in the flume. I don't know if they're testing boats at the moment. No, they can't because I don't see any water actually going down the drop. But water in the flume there. And I, I thought I saw some boats. Hopefully we get a shot of that. Yeah, there we go. Now are these, oh, those are dummies. They've got dummies in the boats. Now they're adding weight. I don't know if those are still the old boats or if those are the new boats. I think they're probably the old ones. But they look different than the ones that we saw them testing previously. I'm seeing considerably less scaffolding out here around this mountain. Most of it is done. There they are again. Are these? The, I can't tell. I, I'm not familiar enough with... I've never actually been on the old Splash Mountain ride. I never went on it. So I have no idea how new or old those boats are. But I would expect that they will get a facelift as well. They're not going to do all this to the mountain and just give us the old boats again. That's my guess. I mean, they have to be stripped. You have to take all the Splash Mountain theming off of them. This attraction is looking more and more finished every time we come back. And that's our update this week, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. You can also follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbaked. On Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's Fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. Until next time, thank you again for watching. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And Fresh Baked. <laughs>